Hi everyone, good morning. It's spring, yay! And it's a new moon today. So happy celestial new year yesterday on the vernal equinox. And happy day today. New moon, new beginnings. Woo, 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 woo. I'm very excited. <laughs> so today we're gonna do a lot of heart openers, back openers. I love wheel and we're gonna kind of play around with that on the wall. We're gonna play around with that on the floor and we're gonna have fun with some energy work. And I am so happy that you're here. Thank you so much for being a part of this practice. And let us begin. Go ahead and come to standing. Toes and heels can come to touch if that's comfortable. And I want you to take a deep breath in through your nose, follow it up with your arms. And coming into center, exhale out of the mouth. Inhale through the nose. You can already hear the constriction in the back of the throat. Go ahead and mirror that for yourself. Exhale out of the mouth slow. A few more rounds. Bigger and longer each time. Last time. Stop in Samastahiti with your hands. Very good. <sighs> Wonderful. Okay, go ahead. Already begin to lift your toes off the, off the mat. Engage Padabanda. Then go ahead and slowly slide them down. <sighs> <laughs> what did I just say? Set them <laughs> down one toe at a time and then lift your kneecaps, lift your glutes, engage your core, open the heart, let the shoulders fall away. You can do this all in Samastihiti prayer pose and deep breath in and let the back of the neck come all the way up. You really want to have a neutral chin to expand the back in the cervical spine. As we stand here still in the silence, allow any sankalpa intention to come forth. If you haven't already begun, start your ujjayi, victorious breath. It generates heat in the body and it's wonderful for your thyroid and parathyroid, as well as your esophagus, your diaphragm, your lungs. It's a very cleansing breath. I will offer up a sankalpa for you today on this beautiful new moon, March 21st of 2023 day. This is our time. We came here on this planet right now for a very big reason, and this is it. Allow love to be your expression in any way that's appropriate and beautiful for you. Allow joy to be your foundation and your expression. And allow your dreams and your highest self 
to walk this earth walk with you. Letting go of any and all things that do not serve from this last celestial year and welcoming the new with spring, with the new promises of beginning a full potential and of the buds starting to grow beneath the snow. We're just gonna let that snow melt away. And if you're in Colorado Springs with me, we'll be getting it through May, <laughs> which I love. And so we're just gonna let that rejuvenate and refresh our souls, allowing that beautiful, essential water to nourish who we are, to become who we ultimately want to be. Wonderful. Go ahead and release that intention knowing that it is. Okay, let's do a little bit of movement just to kind of start moving. All right, my, I have some, yeah, notice any kinks, any tension, any spots that are calling to be moved, like this shoulder or, you know, my neck, my beautiful 17-month daughter is getting all of these molars in. <laughs> yeah, it is hard being a baby and it is hard being the mama who's up nursing that baby and giving comfort while these molars come through but that's just like growth right you know it's hard to grow and then once we do it's just second nature we don't even have to think about it all right so we're just we're just moving moving the whole body and that's a wonderful beautiful thing to step into your center and just move around. <sighs> okay, let's go for a couple vinyasa or sank Surya Namaskar A's. Coming to the center of your mat. This time I've got it on selfie mode. The other way did not work, obviously. My head was chopped off for most of it. Uh, anyways, <laughs> inhale, raise the arms up. Leave the space in between your hands. As we move through this Surya Namaskar A, I want you to feel the energy. And right now we're still warming up our bodies. As we move the energy and breathe deeper and more intense, you're going to feel it in between your hands. Your hands will start tingling. You'll start to have a sensation in between your hands if you don't already experience that. Your feet can be hip width apart. Inhale, mini back bend, exhale. Inhale, and then go ahead and have a swan dive. I'm gonna just scooch over a little bit and squeeze the shoulder blades back behind you. Palms shining forward, hinging from the hips. Engage the core, hello. Inhale, halfway lift. Engage the core even more here. And then what you're gonna do is double check the alignment of the neck. And the back. Inhale, reach forward with the head. Exhale, coming on down all the way for eight limbed pose. Essentially, you can start in plank, lower the knees, keep the toes engaged. And then go ahead, you can walk the hands out a little bit. Lower on down into your chest. So you've got your chin. Your butt's kind of up in the air, so you get some curvature in that low spine. Your chin, your chest, your hands, your knees, and the tops of your toes all engaged. That should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Where's the eight? Oh, the chest, duh. <laughs> Got it, so it's eight limb pose. <laughs> Engage the core, keep breathing here. Wonderful, go ahead and release all the way down. Bring the hands to the bottom 
of the mat. You want your, okay, good, you can see. Palms on the earth, tops of the feet engaged on the earth. Go ahead and lift your kneecaps so it'll have only the tops of the feet on the mat and your hip bones. On an inhale, you're going to lift your upper body. So inhale, take a deep breath in, exhale through the mouth. <sighs> inhale, lift up. Mm, wonderful. For Shalabhasana. Squeezing the triceps, squeezing the glutes. Got this beautiful thoracic strengthener right here. And then exhale, release all the way down. Bring your hands next to your, underneath your shoulders. Go ahead and press on up. Ooh, let's stop at tabletop. Before we just hop in the down dog here. Go ahead and move your hips side to side. Start moving in a circle. You want some wrist and knee mobility for optimal functional range. Send your hips back to the heels and up, straightening the thighs. Exhale back. Inhale up. Exhale back. Inhale up. And you'll notice sometimes, and I know I'm teaching and so the breathing is a little different than if I were just practicing without talking. But sometimes I do release it out of my mouth. And that is a wonderful thing to do anytime. It's cooling. Uh, it's also just very powerful to kind of catch your breath so you can come back even stronger for your ujjayi breathing. So I invite you to play with the breathing. This is not dogmatic at all. Obviously, I'm still moving and wiggling through these motions just because it feels good and the body wants to be moved. And so all I'm setting is the stage for your body to make organic flowing movements. Inhale, curve the buttocks <laughs> or what? The low spine and let the belly hang. Lift the shoulders, lift the collarbone, lift the neck if that feels good for cow. Deep breath in, exhale, rounding the spine, tucking the glutes, tucking the chin for cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. One more time, inhale. The next exhale, we're gonna curl the toes under, lift the feet back and come into the first down dog, for me anyways, of the day. Pedal it out. We will be using the wall for some of this practice. And so uh, I know I mentioned barely, <laughs> if you have a moment to find a wall so that we can play with it while we're doing our Surya Namaskar A and B, and just kind of throughout to offer a deeper experience. The wall is like the earth and it's a very, except it's, you know, vertical. Oh, okay, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> vertical in our home unless you live in a cliff dwelling then you've already got the earth as your wall so what I'm doing here is I'm lifting and alternating feet one at a time up against the wall for a three-legged dog keeping the hips still facing the earth but I'm pressing, this is really giving a strong stretch in the hip flexors, first of all, for the leg that's lifted and way in the back in the calf and up through the back of the landed foot. And try it with your other foot. Thank you. 
and you can keep raising it if that feels good. All right, now we're gonna lower both. Inhale, gaze to the top of the mat. Exhale, step, hop, or float, which I wish I could be able to show you, but anyways, forward fold. <laughs> if you float, essentially, your whole upper body and core is bringing your feet in a floating manner to meet your feet and not just the silly bunny hop that I do to get up here. <laughs> I love watching it. It's beautiful and I'm working towards it. Anyways, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, release, forward fold. Inhale, up. Woo, reverse swan dive. Extended mountain pose, swirl the pinkies in. Take a deep breath and reach. Exhale, mini back bend. Stay here for a moment. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, coming all the way up to extended mountain pose. And then exhale, reverse swan dive. We're going to actually stop right here. Center. And then go ahead and twist. Open. And if it's helpful, lower that left hand, to the left hip, to kind of keep it forward instead of coming way back with you so that you can set the hips and then twist open and revolve in that mid thoracic, upper thoracic spine. Very good. All the way to the cervical. If you can look back at your thumb. Here for a couple breaths. Inhale back up to extended mountain pose. And then exhale, lower the arms, open up to the right. And you can again set the hips, making sure that they're shining forward. And then leaving that there as you reach back, engage the, um, the tricep. Ooh, and feel any differences that there might be. And then let it go. Inhale, back up. Exhale. Why don't you walk backwards for a second? For this mini back bend, see. Oh, I don't know if you can see. <laughs> if you can reach the wall with your fingertips. And if you can, step out a little bit and keep touching the wall. All right, inhale, coming all the way up. Exhale, hands through heart center this time, forward fold, hinging at the hips. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, coming into plank. You can come down to eight-limbed pose that we did in the beginning or Chaturanga Dandasana, which squeezing the elbows into the sides of the rib cage, hover. Inhale, upward dog, if you're ready for it. Or you can come down for Bhujangasana, Cobra. Here for a couple breaths. If you're in Urva Mukha Shivanasana, you want to lift the thighs. And if it feels good, you can look all the way up. Curl the toes under on the next in. Exhale. Inhale. Yep. Yeah. And then exhale, send the hips back. Adho Mukha Shavanasana. Take a moment, come back to your intention. New beginnings. Inhale, gaze to the top of the mat. Exhale, step, hop, or float. <laughs> Feet to hands, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive all the way up. Exhale, open up to the left. Inhale, all the way back up to extended mountain pose. Exhale, open up to the right. Very good. This time we're going to come all the way up. Instead of walking backwards to the wall, we're going to sit in Utkatasana. Ooh, but we could use the wall. Back it up a little bit. 
Yeah, the wall is really fun for this pose because you can just, you know what? I'm gonna just show you. Turn, a little bit, there we go, okay. You're in a low squat, right? Without the wall. You back up and then all of a sudden now you're finding more squeezing in the inner thighs and in the knees, even that energetic squeeze between the calves. You're kind of able to sink a little deeper. Maybe you have the feet out a little more. You don't want the knees over the ankles. It's kind of like a chair, right? Though I have said so many times, this should really be called lightning bolt pose, but that's all right, that's good. All right, up off from the wall, inhale. Extended mountain pose, having the arms down by the side, opening up that collarbone, shining the heart forward. Fingertips reaching. Remember, paying attention to the energy in our hands. And then exhale, coming all the way to plank pose. You can go into Ekapada, oh, what's it called? Ekapada, hmm, eight limbed pose <laughs> or Chaturanga Dandasana. Ekapada Dandasana, I don't know. All right, hover if you're here. Flip the feet, coming up into Urdhva Mukha Shavanasana. Exhale, coming down and back into downward facing dog. Inhale, gaze at the top of the mat. Exhale, step, hopper, float, feet to hands, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Reverse swan dive. Inhale, extended mountain pose, Utita Tadasana. Exhale, mini back bend. Inhale, coming up. If you want to walk back to that wall. Exhale, mini back bend. <sighs> Inhale, coming up. Utita Tadasana. Exhale, hands through heart center, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, and you're just gonna walk your hands up to plank. Move through your vinyasa. Take a moment here, finding the stillness. Release the head. Very good. Now, we're gonna add on some warrior poses. Inhale, if you're up against the wall, lift that right leg up and then open, bend the knee and flip your right hip over the left as you open up the right side body. And then bring it center, hover, lift the knee up to your nose. You can rock forward on the shoulders a bit. Exhale, release it back. Inhale, bring that knee to the outside of the right elbow. Hover. Exhale, bring it back. Inhale, crossing it, reaching the right knee to the left elbow. Exhale, release. And then inhale, lowering all the way or bringing that right foot all the way up front as you lower the back left leg. Setting up for Anjaneyasana. <sighs> Lifting the hands all the way up. And if it's too much, always bring it to heart center. And if it feels wonderful, go ahead and sink really deep. This is such a great hip flexor opener for the left side body. Bring the hands to heart center. Go ahead and feel the energy as we 
open and revolve up to the left, out to the left, I should say. Still, the hips are shining forward and you can make sure, you can set your thumb to the back of that hip, making sure that's nice and in line. Flex the glutes, engage the core. Inhale, coming back all the way. Exhale, mini back bend. Inhale, sweeping that right arm back. And now, if you want, you can bring your left hand to the outside of that right knee to give yourself a little more leverage as you open and twist through the thoracic spine. Keeping the glutes active. Inhale, coming woo, back up. Wonderful, hands to heart center, lower it down, lift the back leg. Go ahead and straighten out the front leg if you'd like. A nice little deep hamstring stretch. Also for me, it gets the top of the foot and the ankle. Maybe because I went on a big hike yesterday, I don't know. Knee is gonna be stacked over the ankle. Lift the core up into the spine. Coming up for crescent lunge. And then just check. You can use your hands as a guide to check the alignment still. Making sure the hips are shining forward. And then see if you can feel the energy in between your hands. All right, inhale, straighten that front leg. And if you need to widen the feet here to give yourself a better stance, go for it. What we're gonna do is kick the left foot out a little bit, coming in a triangle pose. You can turn your hips out a little bit, but you still wanna make sure the knee is nice and protected. So nothing too crazy, the twist will come in the chest. Go ahead, palms are facing down. Fingertips reaching, inhale from the hips, reach, and then exhale, tick tock the arms. No weight in this hand. Feel free to use a block. Blocks are great for triangle poses. You can use it in front or behind the foot. Wonderful. Go ahead and bend into that front knee. And now we're just gonna come into, let's see if I can show you, extended side angle. Utita Parshva Konasana. You can use the block still. Remember, no weight in this hand. You're just using it to balance. And you can get the, uh, outside of the tricep on the inside of the knee to give yourself a little more leverage for a nice twist in the upper shoulders. Or in the shoulder girdle, I should say. All right, we're gonna lift up warrior two. For this one, if it's uncomfortable, you can always switch your feet, bringing up the back leg a little bit. Some of us really enjoy a nice long warrior too. Virabhadrasana too. Can you feel the energy in your fingertips and between them, connecting you into the earth? Inhale, flip the palm, lower that left shoulder, reach back for a bind, reverse warrior. Very good. Straighten that front leg if you'd like to. And we're going to, no, windmill. <laughs> move the block. <laughs> windmill on down, plank, move through your vinyasa. Mm -hmm. 
very good, left side. Inhale, the left foot. You can place it on the wall, the ball of the foot is pushing against the wall, giving you more depth in the right landed leg and a deeper opening in the hip flexor. Bend the knee, stack the left hip over the right. Open up the left side body. Bringing it to center, here we go for some core. Exhale, knee to nose, rocking forward. Inhale, back. Exhale, knee to the outside of the left elbow. Inhale, back up. Exhale, cross over. Knee to reaching the right elbow. Inhale, back up. Exhale, bring it all the way through. Lower the left leg all the way down. Getting centered, setting up for Anjaneyasana. Can you feel the energy in between your hands here? What does it feel like? Do you see any colors? Do you sense any textures? Good. You can lower that right hand to make sure the right hip still rocked forward. And then inhale, reach back, exhale, open up for the revolution to the right. Open twist here. Making sure the hip stays nice in place. All these twists are so cleansing. Inhale back up, very detoxifying. Exhale, you can use your right hand to the outside of the left knee and then open up to the left. Whatever isn't serving or stuck in our energetic field just gets twisted and rinsed away. Inhale, coming back up. You can clasp hands here if you want. I know I didn't do it the last time, but always on the mini back bends, it gives a deeper stretch, more expansion. Ooh, when you close your eyes, it's a whole new world. Inhale, back up, go ahead, bring the hands to the mat, curl the toes, lift the back foot, straighten that leg if you want. And then we're going to come right into crescent lunge. Very good. Beautiful, keeping that back heel lifted. It's a deep opener for that right hip flexor for the one that's soaring to the back. Okay, straighten up that front leg, plant, whoops, <laughs> the right foot. Uh, and still the toes are about 45 degrees turned out. You can keep the length in the legs or you can widen, shorten your stance. And you're going to twist facing to the right, the back leg. Remember, the hips are still going to be at an angle to protect the knee. Twisting in the upper thoracic, reaching, engaging the triceps, keeping the glutes active. Inhale, stretch from the hip. Exhale, trikonasana, triangle pose. You can grab the block if you'd like to help always keeping your core, your obliques lifted. What's the energy like here? There's huge energetic lines going up through the fascia, all the way from the heel up to the hip, to the shoulder, and then out, shooting out the fingertips, both ends. Bend, 
into that front knee, reaching up for warrior two. Go ahead and adjust the stance of the legs if you'd like. Flip the palm, inhale, reverse warrior. And you can try the bind here if you'd like, if you did it on the other side. Reaching for the front thigh, eventually being able to grip it. Very good. Straightening out that front leg. Windmilling the hands down. Go ahead and move through your vinyasa. Very, very good. The only thing I have yet to do is come into a plank. Bring your right hand kind of uh, center in the mat and go ahead and rock on the edge of the right foot, stacking the left on top of the right for a good side plank. Lifting, using the obliques. You can do all sorts of variations. You can do tree. <laughs> As my microphone comes off. Oh, I'm just gonna stay here. You can also grab the bottom of the foot, extend it out. But that's wonderful for me right now, coming into plank again. Bringing the left hand center. Yeah, just do that. Moving on the edge of the left foot, stacking the right on the top of the left ankle. Go ahead, have a nice rainbow during your side plank. If you tried a variation on the other side, do it here. And then slowly come out, coming into plank, and then taking a count of five, it's coming all the way down to the belly. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, good. Release. Oh my goodness. You can come sitting hips to heels. Take a nice sip of water. <laughs> I have a lot of upper body strength, but some days it's uh, a little more challenging than others. <sighs> okay. <sighs> Fabulous. Now, sitting here, hips to heels, and you can curl the toes under too if you want to come into teapot. The hands, <laughs> are they tingling for you? How have they been the whole time? What do you feel? Do you feel it closer, the energy between your hands? Feel it shoulder width? Can you feel it all the way out? Drop into your center, focus. The best part of doing energy work, of focusing the intent and the concentration, is that not only will you have some sort of proprioception of your auric field, but the energetic fields of everything else that we're connected to. And in this web, in this energetic field, is all of the information that we need. It's the collective unconsciousness, subconsciousness, and consciousness intertwined with our own, and then coming into our center. Deep in that silence and stillness that's the cosmic universal information that we need. 
and that we know we have access to all the time. So if you're ever seeking any answers, it's always in the looks within place and never when, with the without, <laughs> out. Look in, <laughs> get the answer. Be confident in the information that you get. Be thankful in the information that you get and then go out with that. And that will always be rooted in love and in joy. Since we're here, we're gonna do some back openers. I'm hoping you can still see pretty well. I do want you to have a block so we can come into bridge and fish. So I'm kind of playing with this right now. Since we will be coming into wheel soon, since we've warmed up the spine and all the different directions, I want you to play with your block. So coming to your sits bones, interconnecting, interconnecting, connecting your, the soles of your feet, your heels, coming into that nice butterfly pose. And then having the block, start with the lowest setting. <laughs> the lowest width. Ah. And then falling, surrendering over this block, right? We have some support here, we have some lift. Great, check in with everything if it feels good, wonderful. Otherwise, use your core, sit up. Let's bring it up a notch. And do I want it lengthwise or do I want it vertical? Ooh. So when you have it along the top of the sacrum and you're letting your lumbar come over it, right? That's pretty wonderful. It might be very intense for some people and it's not super supportive when it's uh, on the skinny part, but it does give a nice broadening in the sacrum and a really nice support in the lumbar spine. So try either one and we're gonna come into Supta Baddha Konasana. Okay just this reclined butterfly position, if you will. And then flip the palms onto the mat. Go ahead and bring your knees together and then set your feet about hip width apart. Now here we can lift for bridge and we're going to come onto the back of our head a little bit more, lowering the shoulders and then lifting the hips, okay. Now we can play with this a little more if we want. We can set our sacrum on top of the block instead of having it just below it. And still, that might not be enough height. So then you can come up onto your toes and play with it here. <laughs> Now, this is if you have a strong core, a strong back, and a strong practice with back bends, or if you're, you know, being safe about it, because you don't want all of your weight on the block. It's wobbly, and you want to protect the spine. But if you can have the support, the encouragement to lift higher than you've lifted before in your hips, then you're opening up this entire part. Breathe deep here. The head is below the heart. Take deep breaths. You wanna feel your quads engage and your calves and your feet. You really wanna feel the strength in your legs. Okay, lower slowly down and maybe you just adjust the block a couple notches before you slowly remove it all the way gauge the core and then roll one vertebra at a time down into the mat it's just oh my gosh okay my light just flickered out 
All right, that's okay. You can still see. Well, oh, that's a bummer. All right, feet up in the air. You can do some waterfall right here for a little bit. If you can grab the feet, go for it. Knees to the chest. That's nice too. Wonderful, and then extend it all the way back. All right, now let's go for fish where we are in a completely supine position with our legs, except we're gonna have the support, not just on our lumbar. This time it's gonna be lengthwise parallel to the mat so that it gives our thoracic the support. Where it goes in between the shoulder blades and then the top of your head can come to the mat. for Matsyasana, Matsyasana. Supported fish, deep breath. This is a big throat opener, a delicious heart opener. Tops of the hands are on the mat. You are relaxing and surrendering into this. You can use a rolled up blanket if this is too much and place the rolled up blanket along your spine. A few more rounds of breathing here. Very good. You can use your core and your hands and your elbows to slowly press yourself up to a seated position and moving that over. Now, I do want to do a couple of things on the wall as a, an example of how you can do wheel if you're not quite there yet, but how you can strengthen and elongate the spine to help you get there in your practice. So how we were doing the mini back bends earlier, hands were up and we're reaching with our fingertips back to the wall. Essentially, this is what you're gonna be doing. So your elbows can come shoulder width or even wider apart. Uh, the, the more open you become, the closer that your elbows will be. But you wanna start where you are and your hands are up and back, just like as if you were on the ground and that they were on the ground next to you. But our ground is going to be the wall. Okay, sorry about the light when it's fine though. I still have daylight coming in. So you start pretty close. You wanna feel the wall and then take a step out. Release the head. Take another step out. And then you can walk your hands down the wall. Okay, your feet are going to be <laughs> hip width apart or more than hip width apart. It's really hard to talk and do that, so I'm gonna try and get all of this out. So when you take a step forward, you wanna see if you can reach your hands back a little bit more. And if you take another step forward, can you go even lower? And then you work until you feel that sensation, that really intense, deep sensation, no pain, and stay there and breathe and open up the chest. and then coming up, you're gonna reverse it. The other thing too, the deeper you go, you can eventually, you know, you can come onto your toes, you can play with the feet, and 
Uh, you want to remember, oh, if you've got a strong, you know, practice, you can just walk on down into a back bend. On the floor, we're going to move into wheel. I'm just gonna like roll forward for a second before I just hop into that again. And if you also wanna take a little break, you can feel free to do legs up the wall for Vipriti, oh goodness, what is it? Vipriti waterfall pose. <laughs> that. Ooh, the other way we could use the wall and the floor is by turning around and having your feet against the wall to give yourself some support if you feel like you're gonna slip. I'm just playing with the wall today. It's fun. Okay. So my wall in this particular spot is pretty silly. <sighs> All right, hands to the mat. We're gonna take a few deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth, and then when you're ready, on that inhale, push up with your legs, with your arms, into a full wheel pose. And when you're ready, go ahead and begin. Deep breath in. Building up the energy. You can even lift your hips up off the mat too on an inhale. Lowering them down and then on an inhale, go. Beautiful. When you're done, slowly come out of it. Bring the knees to the chest. Give yourself a hug. I think the most important part is the breathing in that pose. Because your breath, if you stop breathing one for one, you've gone way too far. So that's your body's cue of saying, back out, I need to breathe. Now, if you're... <laughs> Breathing and it's and it's an uncomfortable breath work with that and see how long you can stay in that pose Because you'll be able to move into the space. Just think Inhale you're expanding outside your comfort zone exhale. There's the space that's created Ooh, feels good and then inhale moving into that space and then ah uh, and if uh, you would like, this is the other thing I always want to say, but I'm like breathing. <laughs> is go ahead and shift the weight into one leg and then begin to bring your knee up and see if you can extend one of your other leg up. I'm going to try that. <laughs> I might use the wall the first time. We're gonna do this pose two more times. Now, again, if you're cool on wheel and you're like, yeah, I'm good, just go ahead and do bridge. And use props if you want to see if, and you can stay in bridge the whole time we're coming in and out. It's a wonderful pose and it's a delicious heart opener and it really helps the blood flow. So lots of healing benefits wherever you're at. <laughs> All right. Anyways, just play around, have fun. Inhale, exhale, and just come into it when you're ready. Oh. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Woo! Okay, so I'll be honest with you, that's the first time I've ever tried that. Cool. That's a different experience. I also thought I was like done on that one because my shoulder, but apparently not. 
apparently there's always more where that comes from. I'm just gonna <laughs> roll. Okay, one more time for you. That was definitely the last time for me, but do that third wheel practice. I wanna see it. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. And just come into it when you're ready. And come down. Very good. <laughs> Honestly, I think <laughs> wheel is one of my most favorite poses to do. It's challenging and it's a whole total spine opener and it's so intense with the heart and I just love it so much and maybe it just brings me back to gymnastics. I don't know, but it's just a, a beautiful, it's such a power pose for me. Anyways, coming on into a seated wide legged forward fold. Uh, but before we go into the fold, I want you to tap into the energy again. I want you to reach from side to side. Man, it's so wonderful. <laughs> and I can really, I can see this beautiful rainbow effect. When you kind of bring your, let's say, you're over your right leg and you're reaching with your left hand up in an arch. Look at the colors. Look at the texture. And if it helps, close your eyes. Can you visualize a rainbow? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, purple pink, black, white, brown, gray, all of it, <laughs> gold, something that my, <laughs> that my son does all the time is just like say the colors like that in order, but it's like, you get to the top, it's like, I think it's black, wh gray, white, gold, silver, pink, black, white, gray, brown somewhere in there too. Pink, brown, black, white, gray, silver. I don't remember, but it's all of it all the time. I love it because I know it's three, the veil is lifted. He's seeing those colors and they're like ingrained in him. And that's just the natural order. Well, that is also the natural order of our chakras. It's a natural order when we are free and flowing, we've twisted and rinsed and cleansed all of those those blockages out of us, we have these gorgeous wings that emulate this rainbow color. And so it's beautiful. <laughs> I just love it. Oh, and I hear it all the time. You'd think I'd remember. All right, deep breath in, reach up high. Then go ahead and walk your hands forward. Remember, please use a bolster or a blanket underneath your sacrum to elevate those sit bones so that you have the earth closer to you as you are surrendering, surrendering into the earth. Feel free to cradle your head. And then walk over to the left. Practice. Um, oh, hold on, I'm going to think of it. Pratyahara. Practice pra Pratyahara, a withdrawal of the senses. Where you're inward. You can even put the thumbs lightly against your ears. Then you can really hear your heartbeat. You can even hear the blood flowing through your body. 
closing the eyes, a withdrawal of the external senses, coming right back to that looks within place, and then moving over to the right. Pratyahara is one of the, uh, I want to say, niyamas of yoga, of the traditional eight-limbed yoga. Wonderful. And coming on up, something to practice to help you reach your ananda, your bliss. We're going to do some Ekapada Rajaka Patasana, some half pigeons. So extend that left leg behind you. And the right knee comes up to that corner of the mat. And you're going to have your front leg parallel to the front of the mat, as is comfortable. Make sure your foot is nice and straight. Ooh, it's always good to check. I'm pressing up. You can use a block or a blanket or anything underneath the hip if it's not connected to the mat and if you feel like you need the support. Go ahead and bend those toes back towards your buttocks and then grab at the inside of the foot. If that feels nice. This is a deep quad stretch. Check in with your sankalpa. Release it down. As you do so, go ahead and release the upper torso, fold it over the leg. You can have the block there for your head to rest on. Or you can come all the way down to your forearms and let your head rest on top of your hands. This pose is so intense for many of us. We have very tight hip flexors. This is a deep opening, especially in the outer part. It gets into the sciatica, gets into the IT band. It's, oh, it's delicious. It's so healthy and I would say nutritious <laughs> for the body. Shine the heart to the earth and I want you to feel a connection there. And then in the back of your heart, I want you to feel the connection to Father Sky, Mother Earth, Father Sky. We are always connected. We are always supported. Okay, now slowly raise up. And go ahead and lift the back leg. This part's always wobbly for me. <laughs> Get that right leg back behind you. Wiggle it out. Oh, yeah. Nice. And then go ahead, lift the left leg, lower the left knee to meet the hand, lowering the back right leg all the way down, checking the foot, and then bringing the front tibia and fibia, <laughs> bringing those bones as parallel to the front of the mat as is comfortable. Again, because clearly my hip is way up here. One day it'll be on the mat. Keep the energetic focus. You're going to get there. You can have some support if you feel that you need it. Or not. I mean, as flexible as I've ever been, my hips have, you know, our bodies are built a certain way. And yes, we can go beyond limits. Ooh, a raven's flying in the sky. Hello. Magical messenger. Okay, I'll just reach for the outside or inside of that back foot. Bend the knee. Anyways, I've gotten pretty close to being flush with the mat. Ooh, this one feels really nice for my shoulder. Oh my gosh, this is, I think, what I needed to do the whole time. 
Go ahead, release. If you ever want to do king pigeon, like let's say your booty is on the mat and then you can reach with both hands your toe and like lift it. That's king pigeon. And I will give you a crown, <laughs> energetic crown. <laughs> Go ahead, release the legs, surrender the torso and breathe. Relax. Opening the front heart space all the way into the center of the earth. Feeling this pure, beautiful love and feeling how she's waking up. She says, I'm waking up, my earth children. You're going to wake up with me. And then in the back, feel this soothing, comforting love from the sun and the reflection of the water in the sky. Coming back to your sankalpa. And then slowly pressing up when you're ready. Lifting the back leg and go ahead and wiggle it out. One last down dog, possibly. I like going from down dog to plank a couple times just to get those hip flexors reset. Beautiful. <laughs> Have a sip of water if you'd like to before we come into our... Just our supine twists and shavasana. I will say one thing about water. Whenever you drink water, whenever you pour water, I deal with water all day. <laughs> we all do, <laughs> whether we are aware of it or not. Put your intention in the water. It is divine intelligence. Pray into the water. And then drink that water, knowing that the prayer or your intention that you have just put into this living intelligence is now saturating every molecule in your body with that same love, with the same awareness and intention and even higher awareness. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, this will be fun, actually. If your head is by the wall, which I invite you to be there, we can come into a shoulder stand before we move into the twists. So for shoulder stand, oh, yeah, okay. You want, <laughs> oh my God, it's been a while. You're gonna kind of like rock your hips up into your hands and then press up. All right, so I'm going to squeeze my shoulder blades back behind me, give you my heart a shelf, kind of pushes out the torso. Oh my gosh, I haven't done this in so long. What am I doing? Okay, I'm just going to use my triceps. <laughs> so I just rocked my hips into my hands. I'm not sure the elegant way to do that. <laughs> Keep your head straight. I'm just laughing right now, okay. <sighs> Breathe that ujjayi breath. Whenever your throat is compressed, it's the perfect time to really crank it up. <sighs> I don't know why I'm trying to squeeze my elbows closer. Okay, I'm going to stop. <sighs> and then, if you want, you can use the wall to try and have even higher shoulder stand and then just press away from the wall. You want your ankles and knees over the hips. Eventually, they'll be over your shoulders. All right, we're gonna lower down. <laughs> try that one more time. But I'm gonna rock and roll up. 
I'm gonna come up even more. And then for plow pose, yeah, we're gonna go all the way over. <laughs> I'm gonna have to remember cues for this, except like just to rock into it. Okay. <laughs> okay, for plow pose, I really won't be able to talk. So just have your hands in your hips, your hips in your hands. Bring the feet all the way down. Now you can press it against the wall and stay at a higher angle, or you can walk it all the way down behind you. Lifting back up into shoulder stand and then slowly releasing one vertebra at a time down onto the mat. Beautiful. Whew. Come into a good happy baby. Some ninja baby kicks. And then go ahead, release that ujjayi breath. My goodness, we've done so much wonderful good work. Good body work, energy work, I love it. And to stack your knees over each other and open up the opposite way. <sighs> For a good spinal twist. Thank your body. Thank you, body. Coming to center, twisting over to the other side. Thank your spine. Our spine's health is the longevity of our life. We want a healthy, beautiful spine with space and the energy flowing through the space forever and ever. We want to practice for life this beautiful body and energy work. Coming into center. <laughs> and then, oh my, extending all the way down for your Shavasana. You can make a little shelf for your heart if you want with your shoulder blades and let your palms shine to the sky. Sometimes I just feel like singing and I'm gonna sing a little bit while we settle into Shavasana. Open your heart, open your body, Open your heart, open your body, lay in peace, lay in love, lay in joy, and lay Thank you so much for being here today. I do invite you to stay in Shavasana for at least 10 minutes, which is exactly what I'll be doing after I say my namaste to you. The light in me 
It sees, knows, and honors the light in each and every one of you. We are the same. In you, I am another. I am another. In lachek. In lachek. Thank you for being here. Much love and light to you. Namaste. And happy spring.